Hi, my name's Matt from Smart Online Tutoring, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to teach IELTS using Off the Class. Now, Off the Class, if you haven't already heard about it, is an amazing teacher toolkit with hundreds of ready prepared ESL lesson plans that you can use to teach your students online or face to face. I recently discovered it and it's changed the way I teach. In fact, I actually use it every day to teach IELTS students how to prepare for and pass the IELTS exam. If you're an ESL teacher, you're probably aware that this is a particularly popular exam and I get many requests for exam preparation classes. In the past, I've often struggled to find decent materials for IELTS, particularly online. And so when I found off the class and saw that it had many IELTS exam preparation lessons ready to go, I thought, great, this sounds good. So I tested it out and yep, it is definitely the way forward. That's why today I want to share with you my experience using Off to Class and specifically how I use it to teach my IELTS students. So before we get started in today's session, let me tell you a little bit about myself quickly if you haven't already seen my blogs or video tutorials. So as I mentioned, I teach English online and I've been doing this for the past five years. I have my own online tutoring business and I actually started this after teaching face-to-face -face in Bristol, which is my home city, and I decided I wanted to start up my own online tutoring business. So I've been doing that full-time now for the past five years, and recently I've been sharing my experience on my blog, Smart Online Tutoring, so that you too can learn how to start and run your own successful online tutoring business. So that's the reason why I wanted to share with you this amazing tool that I've discovered because I think it's a fantastic way to teach online or face-to-face -face, um, and it's a massive time saver. So let's get started and go straight to the slides and I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're going to cover in today's session. So let's have a quick look at what you will learn today, starting with the off to class placement test. This is a great free tool that's included in the platform and I'll show you how you can use it to test your IELTS students and identify weaknesses in grammar. Also we'll look at some important information you need to get from your student before your first IELTS lesson. I'm going to share with you some top tips specifically for IELTS teachers as well as three key skills that you're going to need to teach IELTS students. Also, how to avoid a common mistake when choosing IELTS materials. A lot of people make this mistake, but you don't have to. And I'm going to be sharing how you can avoid that. And also some tips on how to use the new off the class features that were recently introduced to teach online. So let's get started with the first slide, which is talking about information you need to get from your IELTS student. So number one, good idea to make sure you know when their exam date is. This is important because sometimes students have already booked their exam and they might want an intensive course. So this could involve teaching them every day um, for a couple of weeks, for example. Um, however, they might not have even considered booking their exam yet. Um, and so this could be a longer term project um, that you might need to schedule with the student. So finding out what their exam date is, is a very good start. Also, a lot of students have already done the IELTS exam when they come to me. So they might have taken it once or twice or more, and they need additional help in um, getting the level that they require. So they might already have previous experience, um, but they might be completely new to IELTS. So previous band scores that they have already got can indicate what the main focus of the lesson should be. Also, what individual and overall band score they hope to achieve. So the IELTS exam, if you're not familiar, is graded from naught to nine. And there are four sections, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And there are individual scores for each of these four sections and an overall band score um, of all of these sections put together and divided by four. So you can actually find out some good information about 
what they need to work on or improve on um, by asking them about their um, past band scores that they've achieved. Also, finding out why they are taking the test is useful um, because this can help you to understand what their motivation is. You can encourage them towards that goal if you know what it is. And finally, which test they are taking. So the IELTS exam has two different tests, general or academic. Academic is more for higher education or professional registration in an English speaking environment, whereas general is more for secondary education, work experience or training programs, and is also a requirement for migration to places like Australia, Canada, New Zealand and the UK. The exams uh, do have similar sections, um, but there are also areas that are different. So important to find out which exam they're taking so that you can prepare your course accordingly. So where should you start? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about the off-the-class placement test. So this is a good place to start if you um, have a longer term student and you want to identify what their weaknesses are in grammar um, and the placement test is a good way to do this. It's a 100 question test currently and the student can take this in their own time. You can simply send it to them through the platform. Um, when they've completed the placement test, it will actually send the results directly back to you and you'll get something that looks like this. This will show you the answers they got correct, the ones they got incorrect, and ones that they didn't provide an answer for. So let me just show you quickly where you can find this placement test um, by going to my off to class platform. So in the top here, you can see it says teacher and scroll down to where it says placement test. And here you can click assign test and either assign it to one of your existing students or you can send it to a prospective student. This is a really good feature here. Just simply add their um, information here. You can even um, send a copy to the student in terms of their login details and then click add student and this will send the placement test to them. Once they've completed the um, test, then it will come back to you into your um, te teacher student management system here. Um, and just so you know a little bit about what the test looks like, here are some sample questions here. It's multiple choice. Um, these, this is the results that you'll receive. Um, and this is where it starts to get really useful. Once you receive the results, you'll also get one of these, which is an overview of areas that they need work on based on their results. And it formulates a learning plan for you. So you can actually launch and enroll them on specific lessons that will focus on their weaknesses in terms of the grammar um, and the answer that they gave during the test. This is a fantastic way to um, focus on those, those problem areas and get your students scoring a higher band score in their grammatical range as well as vocabulary and accuracy. So that's the placement test. Let's come back to what you should be doing to plan an IELTS course. Well, first question to find out is, have they taken the test before? Um, is it general or academic they're focusing on? We've mentioned that already. And also, which of the four skills they need to work on most? So some students might come with you, come to you and say, look, I really need to work on my writing, for example, and my speaking. Um, this could be based on their previous score or just their, their own personal knowledge of their weaknesses. So once you know what skills to focus on, um, you can also find out what kind of question types they need to practice. In the IELTS exam, there are a load of different question types. And if we take reading as an example, um, there are more than 10 different question types that they need to practice. So with the off-the-class IELTS materials, you can see that they're divided into the four sections, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. The great thing is that uh, you can pick and choose what kind of question types 
you can focus on. Let me have a quick look at that with you now. We can come over to the platform and if you just click teacher or lesson library, it will take you to all of these lesson materials. If we scroll down, we can see the IELTS section and say, for example, they're struggling in the reading and particularly matching headings, for example. That's a common problematic question type for IELTS students. So you can simply choose this lesson here, click launch lesson, um, either enroll a student um, or you can just click I'm browsing if you want to have a look. And here is the lesson. So we can then go through the various slides, um, complete with teaching notes and focus specifically on this question type, matching headings. So this is a really great way to really hone in on their areas of weaknesses um, that they need to focus on in preparation for the exam. So just one note about academic and general. I mentioned earlier, it's important to find out which one they're taking. Um, however, with the off to class IELTS materials, you can use all four sections for general or academic, um, with the exception of the writing here, which has one specific general training lesson. Um, the other writing sections are more focused on the academic side of things, but a lot of them will be relevant for both general and acad academic because they both need to do um, an essay style question in part two. So as with all of the IELTS materials on off to class, the main focus is more on skills and techniques. So even though um, some of the reading and writing sections are different for these two exams, you can still use them for, for both types of students because it's, it's more skill and technique focused. So that's the IELTS materials. Let's have a look now at some top tips for IELTS teachers. So first of all, I recommend that you focus on the structure and format of the exam. This should really be the main focus. As much as 80 or 90% of IELTS teaching um, can focus on structure and format. So for example, how to structure a four paragraph essay in writing part two. In comparison, don't spend too much time teaching language. This is more of a secondary focus. And I know that I found this difficult when I first started teaching IELTS because I wanted to help them improve their language specifically. Um, but IELTS lessons should really be more focused on preparing them for passing the exam based on the skills, techniques, and the structure and format of the exam, rather than helping them improve their language. I know I've just mentioned about doing a placement test um, to check what their level of language is like and to help them with that and that's absolutely fine and, and a good thing to do um, but it certainly shouldn't be the majority of an IELTS lesson or course. Then I also have a tip in terms of practice tests. Um, encourage your students to do these. There are lots of practice tests available online and really practicing and repetition is necessary for preparing for the IELTS exam. Also, good idea to practice time management skills. Examiners will be very strict on time, so practicing this is important for your students. For example, the different speaking parts, I use a stopwatch and even interrupt students if necessary, if they go over time. Also, they definitely need to practice different question types. As I mentioned, there are many different question types in the exam, um, particularly the reading and listening, and they need to be familiar with all of them. And finally, it's a good idea to practice exam skills and strategies. So for example, reading for gist, listening for specific information, or predicting answers. These are all the kinds of exam skills and strategies that students will require in order to pass the IELTS. 
Okay, so let's have a look at three key skills that you need to teach your IELTS students. First of all, probably the most important number one skill for them to learn is paraphrasing. This is really important because it will be relevant and useful for them in all four sections of the exam. If we take the writing part two section as an example, where they need to write an essay, paraphrasing the question within the introduction will be a very easy way for them to score a higher mark. Just copying the, the text is not going to help. It's the same with the speaking as another example. The examiner will ask questions and students are expected to reply using a paraphrase expression or synonym. This will demonstrate that they have a good understanding of how to use a range of vocabulary. It's also important in reading and listening. Both the questions and the texts will use paraphrasing to test the level of the student's vocabulary range, grammar range, and also understanding of the texts. So practicing this with your students will really help them um, in all areas. Also finding and using keywords. This is another important skill to practice because actually it's one that can be very helpful if done correctly, but can also cause big problems if students don't understand how to use keywords. So for example, sometimes students will fall into the trap of keyword matching. What does that mean? Well, say for example, they find a keyword in the question and then go to the text and find the same keyword and think, great, I've now found the answer. Unfortunately, it's almost never that easy. And this is a quick way to lose marks. So you need to explain and show the student that keywords show them where the answer is and not what the answer is. Also, reading instructions sounds simple, um, but surprisingly, a lot of students have problems when reading the instructions. Um, either they don't understand what they need to do in the question, um, or they just make a silly mistake by reading it too quickly. So make sure you practice each of the different question types. So for example, in the reading exam, um, there's a very minor difference between the number of words or numbers that they can add in the answer box. So making sure that they know what it means um, to have no more than two words is another important skill that will help them avoid missing out on easy marks. For IELTS, I believe this is a key component to getting a good score in the exam, that students actually do a lot of their own practice in their own time. And the great thing about after class is that almost all the lessons have got homework included. Um, so for me, this is a massive time saver and will really help your students to learn and self-study in their own time. So here we can see an example of what it looks like when you set homework for your student. Um, and this really will mean no more trawling through endless websites, trying to find relevant IELTS homework tasks. So when you close the lesson slides, you can send homework to your student in five seconds flat. It's that easy. You can even set a time limit here um, to let the student know how long they've got to complete the homework and you'll get an email notification when they've completed it. This is a good way to um, agree on expectations for your IELTS course, how much work they're going to be doing, when they're going to be doing it by, and uh, what you expect in return from your student. Let me show you quickly how you can do this on the platform. If we are in a lesson like this one, for example, the matching headings lesson, we can simply enroll the student by clicking this orange button here. Um, select the student that you want to enroll and click enroll student. Once they are enrolled, as soon as you click this button here, which says close the classroom, um, this screen will pop up, which says, would you like to send your student the homework that comes with this lesson? If you want to preview the homework before you send it, um, you can see it at the top here next to the canvas. You just click this button, it will open up the homework. You can have a look to see what kind of homework they're going to be doing. 
even go through it with them during the class. Um, and also when they receive the homework, they'll get this summary bit here, which will give them um, a selection of the key slides from the lesson. This is a nice feature as well for them to review what you've done during the class. Um, and also if it's a reading homework, for example, they'll be able to view the texts um, so that they can answer the questions appropriately. So that's homework really easy to use and set up, um, saves you a lot of time and also will allow your student to continue their preparation um, on their own. Now earlier I mentioned a common mistake that people make when choosing IELTS materials. IELTS are not authentic texts but they are very close to it so you need to be careful about using English that you find on the internet. Don't make the mistake of just grabbing authentic English texts from any random source. This is a big mistake. What I found to be a much easier way to choose IELTS materials and to avoid this common mistake is simply to use the off-to-class pre-prepared lessons. These have been carefully designed to replicate what students might see within the IELTS exam um, and although they look like they are authentic, they've actually um, been adapted so that they are suitable for the exam. Let me share with you now some features I use most to teach online using off to class. I've already mentioned the homework. Let's have a look now at the pen tool, canvas tool and teacher's notes in a bit more detail. Here we can see the teacher's notes on the left hand side. These are really useful for new and experienced teachers and you can actually separate them from the slides by clicking this full screen button in the top right hand corner. You can then either drag it to a different screen if you wish um, or close it and open it up on your mobile phone or tablet um, so that you can see the teacher's notes um, but the students can only see the slides. Now another feature that I mentioned is the pen tool. If you click at the top here um, I usually drop this down to the smallest size. You can change the color if you wish. And then on the slides themselves, you can simply annotate over the top like this, uh, pointing towards uh, areas that you want to focus on, demonstrating how to um, underline keywords, for example. Um, I'm using this all the time throughout the lesson. You can click the clear button if you want to clear the drawings. The other feature at the top here is Canvas. Um, if you click this one, it will open up effectively an interactive whiteboard. So your screen can now be used to um, add notes. Say for example, if you want to add new language here, that would be easy to do so. Um, you can also do drawing again, um, even adding your own images and YouTube videos is possible. Another nice feature about this canvas is that um, when you close the lesson that you've um, enrolled your student on, they will actually get a copy of this canvas um, in, within their summary. So it's, it would be a good record of anything that you've gone over during the lesson. When you close the canvas, it just returns back to the slide where you were on before. Let's have a quick look at some of the new off to class features that have recently been added to the platform. I think these are really going to help you to teach the materials more effectively and I use them regularly. Looking at one of the reading lessons as an example, if we were to select one word, right click, it then brings up this menu here. There are a couple of different options that we can use. Um, a really helpful one is the image search. If you click this one, it will automatically open a Google image search for you and instantly you can show them what one of the pictures looks like. Very good for quickly teaching vocabulary if necessary. Also, we can um, actually write now on the, each slide. So for example, if we have highlighted where the correct answer is, we can now add it into the text here. Um, this saves using the pen tool um, and it, it's much easier and quicker to add answers to slides. Um, also, let's say for example, we wanted to highlight um, a keyword 
um, and maybe a synonym, then here we could add another one here, like so. And this really helps us uh, to demonstrate what kind of synonyms, paraphrases are being used, um, as well as um, including the answers as well. Other features uh, that you can use, if you right click, um, you can get the word to be spoken out loud, do a translation, um, also use the dictionary feature. So if we click this one, an overlay comes of a dictionary definition. This is great for a quick lookup. Um, if you want something a little bit more detailed, I also use the Macmillan Online Dictionary, which I find to be really good. So those are some of the key extra features that have been added that enhance your teaching. So to sum up, when it comes to teaching ESL, either IELTS exam preparation or general English, time is money. And for me, less time planning lessons means more time teaching and more income. Put simply, off to class is a massive time saver for me, which means I can spend more time teaching students and growing my business. Personally, I'm a big fan of anything that saves me time and helps me earn more money doing what I enjoy, which is teaching English online. If you feel the same way, then I would certainly recommend Off to Class as a way to save time and money within your tutoring business. So that's all from me today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope that's been really useful for you in helping you to prepare for teaching IELTS using Off to Class. If you have any more questions about tutoring online, whether that's general English, IELTS, or how to start your own successful online tutoring business, visit my blog, smartonlinetutoring.com, and feel free to comment in the comment boxes at the end of each article, or you can contact me directly via email. Thanks so much again for listening, and all the best with your online teaching.